Maka, and awakened a character. The character recognized the image she recalled, and he woke up. Aerith? Is that you? At first, Aerith couldn't remember whose voice it was because it was so sudden. Panicking, she turned around and saw a nostalgic face she hadn't seen for five years. He was her light taste of first love. He was also now a very dear friend. He had the same character she saw in Cloud. Zack, who had blue eyes that proved he was in Soldier, appeared before her. Zack! Does that mean you're dead too? Although usually Aerith wasn't one to ask obvious questions, it was the first thought that came to mind, and she spoke out as if it was a reflex. Besides that, it was odd that such a seasoned and highly skilled soldier would die. Even though she didn't know his whereabouts, she was sure that he was safe and living peacefully somewhere. She blamed herself for blindly believing in such a thing. This cruel reality was a strong shock for her. You too. Does that mean you're dead too, Aerith? <laughs> well, I was going to say the same thing anyway, and then... How should I put this? Give my condolences? You haven't changed one bit. No matter what happened, Zack never lost his cheerfulness. As if saved by his cheerful personality, Aerith smiled weakly. Even though she knew that he was a member of Shinra's soldier, it was that part of him that was charming to her. Lots of things happened. All terrible things. It all started when I was dispatched on a mission to the rural Nibelheim. Nibelheim? Yeah, do you know about it? Back then, I was together with a very famous soldier that was known as a hero. He, he suddenly went mad. You mean Sephiroth, don't you? Aerith swallowed her breath. She believed there was a meaning to why Zack appeared. She had a feeling it was linked to something. That bastard really is famous! Or was it because he read about the huge Nibelheim massacre in the news? You were there then, Zack? Then what about Cloud? Whoa, whoa! Hold it there! How do you know about Cloud too? Is he safe? You know Cloud too. There really is a Cloud, isn't there? The two of them quickly exchanged what they knew. And then Aerith knew. She knew that Cloud wasn't just a clone doll made for Sephiroth. She also knew why she saw Zack in him now. Zack also knew. He knew the current state his close friend was in now. The friend who got involved together with him in the incident, as they got hunted down by Shinra. He also knew that Sephiroth was going to be resurrected, and become a threat not just to Nibelheim, but to everything on the planet. Zack, what should I do so Cloud will know the truth about himself? Can you tell him that he's real? It's impossible for us to do it. The only one who can do it is that girl that was there with us in Nibelheim, uh, Tifa. If the memory she has could draw out the memories in Cloud, then maybe. That's going to be hard. But I won't give up. I'm sure there's a chance. Aerith's face brightened now that there was hope. Before long, the chance came. Under pressure, with Meteor drawing near, the planet released its massive biological destructive weapons, and the flow of the life stream was disrupted by their activities. The amount of energy that surged up onto the surface was never seen before. Gushing out into Medeal, Cloud, who was peacefully resting there with Tifa nursing him by his side, both of them got swallowed up into the life stream. Both of them were engulfed by Mako as they fell into the planet. For Cloud, it was the second time, but for Tifa, it was her first experience. Aerith risked everything she had in this golden opportunity. She desperately tried to talk to Tifa, who was about to get intoxicated by the highly concentrated Mako. Guiding her consciousness, Aerith took her into Cloud's closed heart. In truth, Aerith really wanted to do it herself, but she couldn't carry out the task. That's why she entrusted Tifa with it. She entrusted Tifa with all the feelings she had for Cloud in her heart. She entrusted them with the one who was going to live together with Cloud. You did it, Tifa. Thank you. I'm a little jealous of you, but do you take care of Cloud in the upper world? 
Tifa embraced Cloud tightly as he returned to his senses. Aerith watched as both of them returned to the surface while smiling like an affectionate mother. It was a dazzling sight for Zack. Man, you know, Aerith, out of all the girls I've gotten along with, you truly are the best. After that mission, we could have stayed the way we were and might have been able to continue to go out with each other after I returned home. I hate Sephiroth, and I hate Shinra for hiding all the stuff they've been doing! Someone who gets along well with so many girls can never become a lover. How mean. I'm nice to everyone. And that's your bad point. You're not simplistic and awkward like Cloud. Is that what you like, Aerith? Who knows? Things might have changed after five years. <laughs> Zack put on a sad face, as if he was sulking, but then smiled, carefree. It was the unchanged smile that Aerith knew from when they were young. When she was 17, it was what attracted her to him. It's not over yet, but I'm gonna sleep for a while. It seems there's nothing I can do just now. But whenever you feel lonely, call me, Aerith. Only if I get really lonely. Good night, Zack. Giving a wave, the first class soldier sank into the Mako. Believing that his role was not yet over, Zack settled down to sleep and save up his energy. Aerith wasn't going to sleep. Because she was Setra, she didn't seem tired at all. She was happy. She was happy that she now knew the real Cloud and was able to watch over him, even though it was just for a short while. And so, Tifa accomplished the task. Collating her own memories with that of Cloud's, she looked for the things that only the real Cloud could know. Proving it all, the closed door was opened. Not leaving Soldier allowed Genova's power that was implanted in Cloud to copy the Soldier traits of his close friend, Zack. Drawing out the deep memories that were firmly clammed up inside of all of that, she reconstructed his original character, instead of the fake character he created to protect himself. <laughs> Aerith stopped in her tracks as she heard laughter that sent chills down her spine. Even as Cloud and the others fought to find a way to break into the northern crater on the surface, she continued to travel through the life stream, trying to find some tear in Sephiroth's barrier, or some opening that would let her free the suppressed holy. But she found none. Having fully unveiled Genova's powers, Sephiroth was firmly protecting the crater that was going to become his cocoon, especially from any forms of approach by the life stream. By doing so, he could avoid the will of the planet that had grown wary of Genova for all these years, and hide from the eyes of the weapons that were born to expel any foreign bodies from the planet. If Holy didn't work in time, then, just as Aerith began thinking about the situation, the laughter echoed again. A new soul had just fallen into the Sea of Mako. It was a hunched-backed man in a lab coat, who had a face filled with thin, nervous veins and a deranged laughter. Originally, under the authority of Shinra, he was a mad scientist that performed unethical human experiments repeatedly. Hojo slowly turned his attention to Aerith. Professor Hojo. Ah, the daughter of the ancients. I see. As long as the Cetra have the willpower, they can exist in the life stream without letting their consciousness be scattered. They only lose their ability to be human. <laughs> Very much like Genova and Sephiroth, you could say. Don't put me together with them, and you still don't remember my name. That doesn't matter. It's far more appropriate to call you the last remaining ancient than any other name, so that it reflects your true unique nature. Oh yes, your difference in my samples, coupled with my numbering, would have been sufficient enough to distinguish you. Are all humans and living things just test subjects to you? You still can't change, even here as a soul? <laughs> No, no, I have changed. I've changed a lot long before I fell into this life stream. 
You don't understand, do you? Ah, this lab coat is in the way! Tojo wrapped his fingers from the lab coat he was wrapped in, and tore it off vigorously. The image of his lab coat was torn into thousands of pieces, flying away wildly like feathers, exposing the body of flesh that was hidden underneath. The body before her was not human, but was composed of Genova cells, a sight that she had seen many times. Hojo had grown tired of experimenting on the bodies of others, and in turn himself into a subject for his corrupted experiments. <laughs> in other words, I'm no different from a sample now. Even you never imagined that I had changed this much, did you? <laughs> Could you? Professor Hojo, did you? Th